So excuse the face today. I am a little bit tired, but I've just had a whole day at work and I haven't filmed for a month. So I thought, you know what? Today is the day. Here I am ready to tell you about how I prepare for hospital pharmacy interviews. Okay, so you've got your hospital interview. Great, congratulations, you've done your application, but now is the hard part, the preparation. When I prepare for a hospital interview, there's generally three stages to it. The first stage is general preparation and I call this information gathering session. The second stage is scouting and trying to find as many questions as possible and coming up with my own answers. And the third stage is actually sitting down, reading all of the information you've collated and learning it and practicing saying it out loud. In this first video, I'm gonna talk about the first stage. In the second video, I'm gonna talk about the second stage. And obviously I'm not gonna make a video on the third stage because that's just up to you to revise and sit down and practice saying things out loud. So yeah. So this video is the general preparation part, which is stage one. Find a cafe or a place in your home where you can just relax and chill out. You've got your laptop, you've got your highlighters and you've got a printer. The first thing that I do in this general preparation session is print off anything that they provide you. So you know on NHS jobs at the side, they give you documents like job description and person specification and anything else like why this trust and why this hospital or whatever. Any sort of documents that they've provided you, print those off and read through them. When it comes to the specification, they will say things that are essential and or desirable or and and they will tell you what is going to be assessed in the interview and what's going to be assessed in the application. So take a real hard look at these documents. They've given you the answers. They will be testing you and the interview will be based on those documents that they've given you. So know them inside out. When they've read your application, they'll have given you marks based on the person's specification and where it says interview, you'll know what they're gonna test you on. So if it says must communicate clearly in English, application slash interview, they'll have checked your English when reading your application, but then they all also will check that you can communicate clearly and appropriately in the interview as well. So those are hints. If you can't, if you don't know those documents inside out, then what's the point in going for the interview? Make sure that you know what they want and you are ready to show them that you have what they want. Another example is if they say must be must be able to you know complete medicines reconciliations on the wards and communicate with doctors and things. Think of examples that you're gonna say and just jot them down on the side. I always just make sure that I know all the documents inside out and I know what they want so that when I walk in, I'm aware of what the job is and what they want from me. The second thing that I do is I'll go on the website. So I go on the website for the trust and I'll check what their values and mission is and I'll try and memorize those. So they will ask you, okay, or they might even test you. So if a value is, must be like brilliant, compassionate, respectful or whatever, I try and think of specific examples where I've shown those values because they will ask you about it in interview. The third thing is identify something special about the hospital. So obviously there's a reason why you want to apply there. What's that reason? Is there something that they're doing in that hospital which is different to other hospitals? For example, the one that I applied for was have like a massive HIV clinic thing happening and my interest is kind of going, I mean I do eventually maybe want to specialise in HIV pharmacy, I'm not sure yet, but that is something that I'm thinking of. So. I looked on the website, I saw what work that the pharmacy department do for the HIV clinics and that was kind of like my sort of thing to say. So if they say, why this hospital? I've got something to say. Equally, if they're doing something like refurbishing the whole place and there's, you know, starting some sort of tertiary like cancer department thing, that too might be a reason why you want to join them. So just think of things from their website, just look and see, okay, what can I say? What can I say in this interview? that can convince those interviewers that I wanna join their hospital. Number four is NHS values. I've only actually been asked about the NHS values once and that was for a pre-reg interview, so I haven't really had it for a band six rotational pharmacist interview, but I feel like ever since I was asked about the NHS values, I've always kept them in my folder and I revise them as well, just in case, because obviously you are working for the NHS, so you wanna know what their values are. And the one I can remember now is that everyone counts and so you want to know and be aware of those values. Number five is any recent pharmacy news. 
I literally just go on Google, search pharmacy, and see what's up. Or I can search drugs, and I will give it a read, and I'll print off the articles, and I'll just kind of come up with my own opinion on it. So at the time of my last interview, there was lots of like Brexit stuff going on about shortages, and so I just looked a, like a little bit deeper into that. There's also like clinical trials happening. There might be some clinical trials that are happening at the hospital that you're applying for. So always just be aware of pharmacy in the news. Obviously, pharmacy is always changing as well. So you want to be, you want to look like you know all about that. You want to have a news article that you know inside out and that you can discuss with the panel. Number six is the Francis report and the Carter report and any kind of recent report that involves maybe the failings of the NHS or something like the five year forward view, things that are sort of planned. Yeah, any kind of report, just be on top of those. Number seven, think about what question that you wanna ask the interviewers. So when you are doing this information gathering, you'll come up with your own questions. You'll be like, oh, I wanna know more about this HIV clinic or I wanna know more about this um, newly refurb new refurbishment happening. Or, I wanna know more about the diploma or whatever. So come up with questions that you can ask the interviewers and be ready to ask them. One question that I'm telling you now because I've been successful and uh, recently got a job that I'm really excited for, is basically I have never failed with this question and it's what do you like about working for this trust and each panel member has a different answer so I, I kind of include everyone and also it tells me why they're happy to work for the trust and if they don't seem happy that would kind of you know bring up red flags for me so I kind of just like to ask them a question and then they're convincing me why I should join them so that question has never failed me. Obviously I've asked questions about the diploma. I generally don't ask questions about pay, stuff like that, I don't know, I just, I feel like it, or when they're gonna get back to me, I think that that is just up to them. So I just don't really ask about stuff like that. I mean, you should be aware of the salary because it comes up on NHS jobs, but yeah, I just don't go there. And another thing I do in the preparation is uh, check you know, is it a specialist hospital? So right now I work for a mental health trust. So if I walk into the interview and know nothing about clozapine and nothing about clozapine clinics and mental health in general on lithium and sodium valproate, then I look like an idiot. I went for an eye hospital interview and I actually studied the whole structure of the eye. I didn't get that job, but that's a different story. So just look at what you're supposed to know. As you collate all of this information together and print it out and put it in a folder, there will be things that you come across that you don't know. And so always I'll just put a little line and Google it and make sure that I know what the hell everything is about. When it comes to stage three, which is obviously the revision and where you sit down and practice saying your answers out loud, I don't want to be sat on the computer on Google think like researching stuff. When I revise, I want all of my information to be there, ready for me to learn. So I make sure that when I flick through all of the information that I've collated together, that it's ready, Just it's just there, ready for me to learn. So yeah, the general prep is where you gather information about the hospital and about pharmacy in general and the NHS and just put all of that together. And that I think is basically perfect in stage one. As I do it and I, as I find this information and gather all of the information from different sites and things, I don't try and memorize it. I'm just, all I'm doing is putting it all in one place. And so I'll print, I have Word documents and I just, even if it's different fonts and it's just all things copied and pasted and shoved in and articles and all of that, I just, at least I make a document and just put all the information in one place. So yeah, that is the general preparation for your hospital interview kind of done. Obviously there'll be things I could have missed out, but just put them in the comments below and I'm sure it'll help other people. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about the different types of questions that you get in the hospital interview and the way that I've answered them and where I've failed and where I've been successful. So I hope you look forward to the next video. I am sorry that I haven't been uploading for a month. I have been going through some difficult times, but you know, I'm so happy to be back now. I actually feel really good. This channel wasn't supposed to be starting with anything related to pharmacy, but I would just want to put videos out there that I think will help other people. And if they help other people, then I'm going to continue doing it. So yeah, I hope that it's all good and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!